what your cleaning business should be tracking and why. You know, any of us that are in business, we have to be tracking and we got to be tracking some numbers. You know, it's very important. We have to know our numbers in order to know where our, our company's at. So for, for example, you know, we have to track our cash flow. Uh, you would think that'd be a given, but you know, many people don't do it. You know, we have to know where our cash flow is. You know, do we have enough cash to pay our bills uh, and pay employees, labor, our suppliers? You know, we have to make sure of that. Uh, so one of the things that we can do is that we can always take a look at our expenses and see where we're spending money. You know, one of the most common things that, that I notice is that we're typically spending money where we really don't need to be spending money. Uh, a lot of times it ends up being some of these monthly uh, charges that we have for apps and different things like that. You know, uh, the thing that you want to do is go and look at what you're spending your money on and uh, review some of the apps that you're using. You know, when was the last time you used it? Uh, you know, are you paying 10, 15, 30 dollars a month for that app? You know, all those things add up. So go back and take a look at that stuff. If you're not using them, delete them. You know, stop, stop paying for it. Uh, you know, so that's very important because that's affecting our cash flow. Um, you know, something that you might probably want to do is you probably want to track your cash flow monthly. And, um, you know, in order to do that, you can always do your P&L uh, spreadsheet. And if you don't know that, uh, know what that is or uh, have one developed, you know, go on the janitorialstore.com or myhousecleaningbiz.com and we have videos that show you exactly how to set one up and, uh, you know, how to read it and so on and so forth. So, you know, that will really help. Uh, but it's very, very important that we know what our, class, our cash flow is. You know, the bottom line is that we don't want to go broke. So, and that's typically what happens is that uh, companies will overextend themselves and spend more money than what they got coming in. So we just don't want to do that. So in those terms of thinking that, you know, about having, uh, uh, spending more money than what's coming in, one thing we have to, again, is track our accounts receivable, our AR. You know, we have to look at the percentage of what's overdue. And it's interesting because uh, I know a lot of cleaning companies kind of set this aside too because either they don't want to have that conversation with their clients, but it is a conversation that we have to have, a very important one. So, you know, if we got accounts, uh, accounts receivable that are sitting out there 30, 60, 90 days or more, you know, that's not good. You know, that's really hurting us. That Well, it's hurting our cash flow, obviously. So, you know, that's something that we have to address and we have to attract, the, uh, uh, attract that. Um, you know, so if we have uh, our terms, you know, set up your terms and uh, they can be whatever you want them to do, uh, whatever you want them to be. Because remember, that's always negotiable. A majority of your commercial cleaning accounts will have thir net 30 uh, terms. But, you know, we always had net 15, net 10. Uh, you can do net 5. Uh, and in some cases, you can actually have your customers prepay for their services. That's an ideal situation is to have them prepay for the services and or have them on a credit card account. So think about that. But, you know, when we have accounts, that, uh, accounts receivable that are out 90 days, uh, boy, that's, that's really hurting us. You know, just think of the, the you know, the, your expenses that you had, your labor that you had to pay, and so on and so forth, uh, supplies and, and everything else, just to you know, take care of that account. Um, so with something like that there, you, you have to uh, get a handle on it and we have to get, uh, we have to make people accountable. Start making phone calls, you know, following up, letting them know that, you know, we haven't received payment for 60, 90 days and, uh, you know, and give them a date in which, uh, in which to pay it. Uh, that's what we always did. You know, uh, we had uh, very few that went that 90 days but uh, when we did, you know, we would always be following up and telling them that, you know, uh, first of all, we'd be sending invoices. So we'd always send multiple invoices. So typically three invoices, you know, one per month. And, and as we've seen that the, it kept on getting wider and wider, we'd send them more often. But anyway, in any case, we'd always make sure that we sent at least three invoices. Uh, then we would make a phone call and uh, start having a conversation with them, you know. Uh, you've got outstanding invoices, they need to be paid. Uh, do you know when you're going to be paying them? Can you give me a date? Um, and so on and so forth, you know, and hold the, hold the client to it. And uh, in some cases, what I actually had to do is I would contact them uh, in person um, and uh, I would let them know that, you know, you haven't paid your bill in 90 days. 
uh, as of this coming, you know, as of tomorrow, we will not be cleaning your account or servicing your account any longer until you are uh, paid in full. You know, so we would pull our, if we had any equipment in the account, we'd pull, pull our equipment out and we wouldn't provide service until we got paid. And uh, in, in a couple of rare cases where people uh, continued not to pay their invoice, well, uh, we uh, just, uh, I told them that we're going to take them to collections. You know, and we had uh, an actual collections company set up to where if we ever needed that service, and we did it a couple of times. Uh, you know, but you got to remember it's business, you know, and we're providing a service. They expect us to be there uh, every day or when we're scheduled to, to clean and clean and do a good job. Well, we expect to be paid on time. So at some point you have to get, you know, get a little, hard, a little hardcore there and you have to tell them, here's your ultimatum. Either we get paid today or we turn it over to collections. So when you, do, when you turn it over to collections, what happens is that that's going to hurt their credit. Um, so, and maybe some companies don't care about that, but most do. Uh, so typically, whenever we had to go that route, we generally had payment within one or two days. Um, and then obviously we'd give them a 30-day notice or we or wouldn't even do that. We'd just let them know that, you know, as of today, we're not gonna service your account anymore. It's just not a good fit. So your accounts receivable is very, very important. You know, that uh, has so much to do with your cash flow. And like I say, don't be, don't be shy about asking for your money. You've worked hard and you've taken care of that account, so you expect to be paid on time. So make sure you do that. Now something else that we have to do is that we have to track our sales revenue allocation. Very important, you know, because with this here, uh, you've heard the expression, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, and that's so true. So, you know, we don't want to have uh, one or two accounts that make up the, the, the source of our business. So that essentially means that they, they all hold about 33% of our business, which is way too much. You know, you're better off being positioned to where you have a, a lot of smaller or a lot of accounts, uh, diversified accounts, than you are having two or three large accounts. So keep that in mind. Uh, so keep on uh, track that, you know, and, and make sure you don't let it get away from you. Because that's easy to do too, because what will happen is that you'll get the opportunity to, to uh, land a, a big account, you know, to maybe where you can pull in $8,000 or $15,000 a month. You know, and sure you get excited about the numbers, this, that, and the other, but, you know, make sure you watch that and make sure that no one company uh, pulls in more than 20% of your business. Uh, that's just a general rule that I always use. So, so do that and you'll be in good shape. You know, like I say, don't put all your eggs in one basket, you know, spread them out. Um, you know, a good example of that is the, when the uh, coronavirus hit, um, you know, a lot of us uh, in the commercial industry, we did okay. You know, we, we held our own. We maybe lost, you know, 30% of our business in some cases, but, you know, uh, that means that we retain 70% of it. And that's generally because of we were diversified in different segments. Now, some of them that, some of these people that were holding school accounts and, um, uh, you know, uh, athletic club accounts and things like that there, you know, obviously they got hit hard because they were putting all their eggs in one basket uh, in just a couple of different types of accounts. So diversify and spread it about and uh, you'll be in good shape. And like I say, continue to track this. Don't have any one business hold more than 20% of, uh, of your business, okay? Uh, so now the, the last one that I, I like to talk about is production rates. And if any of you have watched any of these videos, you know I talk about that a lot. I always talk about us knowing our own numbers. And you know, production rates is something that we should be tracking all the time. We have to know what our production rate is for any type of cleaning service that we offer. If it's a general clean, if it's a deep clean, you know, um, we have to know what our production rates are. What are, what are our teams producing, you know, per hour, uh, square foot wise. And by doing that, the, 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 the whole important thing about that is knowing our production numbers is that it helps us price accurately. Uh, if we don't know our production rates, that means that we can't uh, come up with a time to clean when we're doing a proposal for an account. And, you know, we, we have to know these things. So by knowing our production rates on a general clean that we may be offering for an office or a medical facility or a manufacturer or an educational uh, facility, uh, you know, and it could be retail. Uh, if we know our production rates based off of what we've done in the past, 
we can use that average production rate to estimate the time to clean for this next account. And it doesn't matter what size it is. It could be 3,000 square feet or it could be 300,000 square feet. You know, so uh, that's why it's so important to track your production rates. So continue to do that. Know your production rates for every account that you have. And uh, you should actually have an account sheet to where you have all the information about that account uh, uh, on your computer uh, in a folder somewhere. And uh, on there, we should be able to go and look at that and, and know what the production rate is for that account. So continue to track these things because it's very, very important. You know, we have to have our cash flow. Uh, we got to make sure that people are paying us on time. And uh, we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket because that's just asking for trouble. And we have to all know our own numbers and we have to know our production rates. So that's what, that's what we need to do. And, uh, you know, you can find a lot of this information on the janitorialstore.com or myhousecleaningbiz.com. You know, we have a lot of tools and resources there uh, that will help you, uh, you know, set this all up so you know your own numbers. Uh, like I say, it's very, very important that we're tracking some of these numbers. Uh, because if we're not, then that just means we're shooting from the hip and, and we're, uh, we're responding to things rather than being pre proactive and knowing where we're at with our business. So, well, hopefully you found this helpful. And if you did, go ahead and click on the like and share button. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for checking in today. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.